este pues era, yo, yo prefiero... ¿Hola? Sí, yeah, sí, es muy fuerte. She's in the door. She's locking the door. Do you want to sign or not? Are you gonna sit with us or? No? <laughs> okay, so we should start, yeah? Sure. Okay, so hello everybody. Um, my name is uh, Alfonso Renard and I'm a PI at the Champollimon Neuroscience Program. And uh, we're gonna give a small presentation together with uh, a few students from the, from the program. So this is uh, Tiago. Gonzalo, Ali, and Marina, okay? So then the, the idea is that I will um, tell you a little bit about why we're here and uh, a little bit about the program first, and then each of them will tell you a little bit their story of why, how they ended up in neuroscience and what they're doing. And then, because we're very few, ideally we make this very informal and at the end we can have some kind of discussion or questions where you can ask us anything that you're interested in knowing about the program or about how doing research at the Champalimois. Can you hear me well or, yeah? Um, so, that's the, so that's the plan. So the, I guess the main reason that we thought about uh, coming to, to the IST to talk to you is that uh, on the one hand for what we do, for studying the brain, for studying neuroscience, we feel like there's a big need uh, of motivated people with your skills, so people that have a background, let's call it a quantitative background, so background in engineering, physics, math, computer science. Um, so a set of disciplines are very useful to study the brain, but at the same time we feel that for people like you it might not be immediately obvious that this is like a very natural career path, okay? And so then we decided to come to basically tell you a little bit why we feel that what you know is very important for what we do and to try to encourage you to come talk to us, to learn about the place and ideally to work uh, at the Champalimo, okay? So I guess, uh, where is the thing? Yeah. So that's just our names. Uh, Next, please, please no. Oh, yeah. So the, yeah, the first thing that I uh, thought we could try to get a sense of is like, what do we do at the Champalimo? So the Champalimo, as you know, is a, it's a foundation that has both a basic research component and a more clinical component. So we work in the basic research area, which uh, so far uh, is deals mainly with neuroscience, with studying the brain. Uh, and is now expanding towards studying biology from a more broad pers perspective, okay? But, but the department as it is right now studies the brain, okay? And that's what, what we do and what we think you can contribute to. So, so I guess the, the first thing is what does, what does the brain do? What is it that we're studying? And so here in this slide I was just uh, putting up a, a bunch of uh, words or ideas that I think are kind of immediate to all of us and that uh, different people in the department study such things such as perception, learning, memory, emotion, planning, making decisions, acquiring skills. And so uh, it's things that are kind of on the one hand very immediate to us because they are very connected with our experience of being, you know, being a person, interacting with others, being in the environment, uh, but on the other hand, it's not totally clear that this is something that you can study scientifically, rigorously, okay? So, so basically that's the, the kind of thing that, that we do is to try to approach some of these problems from a scientific perspective, okay? And so that means designing kind of rigorous experiments that simplify 
these issues and make them amenable to study, okay? And the, maybe you can guess from the diversity of things that are included in this slide that this enterprise is very multidisciplinary. So it requires uh, scientists to approach these problems from a diversity of perspectives. So in the next slide, <laughs> yeah, I tried to list basically uh, a bunch of different uh, things that are related to this process, okay? So one set of things that one needs to do is to perform experiments, okay? So the, the kinds of experiments that, that we do uh, are very different, okay? And encompass a variety of approaches or techniques which go from molecular biology, genetics, studies of behavior through ethology or psychology, and then things that are a bit closer to the kinds of things that you guys might have an interest or, an, or experience with. Things such as electrophysiology, imaging, microscopy, magnetic resonance. So there's a whole set of different ways in which one tries to acquire data from the brain. There's another aspect of the process that is just as important, which is understanding this data. So we, as I'm gonna kind of try to argue later, we are now in a position where it's relatively easy for us to record or gather enormous amounts of data from the brain, uh, but that's really not enough. The, a big challenge is to understand the data, and the data is very complicated, so one needs things such as you know, statistics or machine learning, uh, dynamical systems, optimization, computation, to, to try to make sense of the data sets that we are gathering, okay? A, a further kind of piece of the puzzle is kind of designing tools that allow us to either gather the data or understand the data. So things like making viruses or making molecules or doing genetic engineering to making electronic devices, making microscopes or new techniques for microscopy, developing new materials that allow us to record from the brain better. And, uh, and finally, in addition to recording from the brain in this way, we can also try to use the brain as an inspiration to learn about other things. For instance, we can use the brain as an inspiration to make robots or to make artificial systems that can see or that can reason, uh, to make different kinds of computers, a bit more removed, but also I think very important in the long term to try to interface what we know about how people feel and think should inform our ideas for law, for how we act as individuals in society, etc. And so the point that I was trying to make is that for many of these issues, uh, basically the kinds of things that you guys study and are interested in are really important, okay? And so, uh, even though it might seem that actually neuroscience is something that has mainly to do with biology, that is really not how, uh, how we operate. And many of us, for instance, my uh, training was in pure physics, and many of these guys' training are in engineer, engineering. There's, uh, so there's a, whole, as I there's a whole diversity, basically, of backgrounds that people who are successful neuroscientists have. Uh, from there's some biology, psychologists, engineering, math, physics, um, medicine, and so 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 clearly the you know being an engineer or being somebody interested in in designing systems and in learning how things work, it's like a really great background in order to study neuroscience. Okay, uh, so I also wanted to try to. <laughs> I guess we can talk about both at the, at things at the right time. So one, one is why, why we think that neuroscience is so exciting, okay? So, and some of these things I've already mentioned, one thing that is really, I guess, interesting to me and to many of us is the idea that through neuroscience we can study scientifically a number of things that are very intimate to our experience of being human, okay, like how we feel, how we think, but that typically have been approached more from the social sciences, okay? And nowadays, these are things that one can study 
scientifically. So designing kind of rigorous objective quantitative paradigms that give us a hint onto how these uh, emotions or these thoughts or these feelings, experiences, everything that has to do with being a person uh, actually really works, okay? And so that's something that I think for everybody is kind of genuinely interesting and something that is very motivating. Another uh, reason why neuroscience is at this moment a very interesting field is that uh, because we actually know very little about how the brain works, uh, critical findings are still kind of sparse and happening in small groups. So it's not like this is an enterprise where you know, thousands of people work together to make like little advances. It's still at the point where a group of five or 10 people which are smart, motivated, and have ideas can make like really big discoveries. And so every person can make a difference. You know, like if you're somebody that is very driven and excited, you can discover something yourself that will be in the textbooks, okay? And so that doesn't happen in all the disciplines, uh, but it does happen in neuroscience at this point. And then finally, I guess it's just the realization that although the brain it seems very complicated and uh, behavior, which is what the brain does, also seems very complicated, if you think about it at the end of the day, it's still a physical system that can be understood like any other physical system. And so, uh, in a sense, our job is to kind of reverse engineer the brain and to try from our very kind of limited sampling of how the individual elements work, we try to figure out principles of function, et cetera, et cetera. And so this is something that is, uh, I think, a drive for everybody who studies physics over engineering. So, so it's something that actually, yeah, sets up a lot of interesting problems for people with your background. And, and right now, it's actually a great moment to jump into the field. Oh, it's yeah, because over the last, say, five or 10 years, there's been a breakthrough in the field in terms of the experimental techniques that people are using in order to study the brain. So you know, one could say that almost from, say, the 60s or the 70s until the early 2000s, if you were interested in understanding how the brain produces behavior, the standard approach was to uh, try to train, uh, you know, either you study human behavior, which is, uh, allows you a lot of control over what a person is doing or thinking, but it makes it very complicated to kind of mechanistically understand what's going on in the brain, or you study how animals process information or generate behavior. And then the idea was to try in order to find kind of mechanistic explanations relating neural activity to output, to function, to behavior, people were going like one neuron at a time. And so that, you can imagine, is kind of a hopeless enterprise because there's trillions of uh, neurons in the brain, right? And so over the last, say, five or 10 years, a few techniques have kind of made, are, have become established and na are now kind of routine, which allow scientists to record instead of one neuron at a time, relatively small groups, but nevertheless so on the order of hundreds of neurons at the same time. So you can basically record from networks as opposed to recording from single cells, and this makes a huge difference into the kind of ideas that you can get about how the brain works. A lot of techniques also allowing kind of labeling the I genetic identity of different uh, neurons have become available and that permits basically studying the system, putting labels onto the different elements that correspond to function. And so if you th think about it, the, the brain basically, the brain function is the outcome of the interactions of many, many components, but these components are not disorganized, they're organized, and knowing this organization is critical, but until recently it was very difficult. And nowadays, we have tools that allow us to know the identity of these different components, and that makes it uh, much easier, in a sense, to try to understand how the system works, and that means that there's now like an explosion, basically, of things that are very salient, very immediate, but that until now have been very difficult to do. And at the same time, these the same kind of tools that allow us to know who is who, allow us to perturb the way these different elements work. And that, 
the idea to be able to manipulate a system, not just to observe it, but to also perturb it, is really what you need in order to kind of figure out causally how different elements are contributing to function, okay? So this, this is something that is only there for the last few years. And so basically jumping into the field now gives you the opportunity of kind of riding the wave and uh, accessing all this kind of new data that is being generated that until now seemed like science fiction, okay? And at the same time, with this kind of new flood of data, there's huge challenges in understanding it. Eh? And so that's something that is, I think, a little bit underemphasized typically, but that is really important. We have now, I think, more data than, even though we are still kind of living in a very undersampled regime where of the millions of cells in the brain, we can only record very few, but still the few that we can record, we don't really know how to interpret their activity in the context of the function that the brain is producing. And so that is gonna require kind of theoretical knowledge or thinking about uh, how to organize the data, how to extract meaning from data, et cetera, et cetera. And so that's another thing where people with a quantitative background can make like a really big impact. So, So yeah, the, the, a little bit about the center and the program, and then I'll give the word to these guys. So the center, it's uh, relatively new. It's been uh, established for say five to 10 years. We now work in a building in Belen that is only four years old. And uh, it's a group of approximately uh, 200 people or so, uh, made which are organized in 17 laboratories, each of them studying different aspects of brain function, and a number of platforms, technological platforms, which provide services to all the different labs, okay? And so I'm not gonna describe in detail what each of the labs do, rather the emphasis of the program as a whole is trying to think of the brain from a functional perspective. So rather to, to worry about like details of how the different elements work in themselves, it's kind of an integrative approach where we try to explain behavior. So the, the output of the brain, which is how animals behave, how they move around, how they perceive the environment. And so in the center, there are groups that take different approaches uh, in order to relate behavior, the output, to the way the brain functions, okay? And so there are people studying different uh, model systems, which include rodents or flies or fish, okay? Uh, people take different approaches in terms of how they investigate the brain. Some use uh, microscopy, some use electrophysiology, some use behavior. Some labs have a strong theoretical component where they do theory or they try to analyze data in sophisticated ways, etc. okay? So that's a little bit of just like a very brief uh, overview of the, the, the style of the research that is done. And then the, although I'm gonna mention like different ways in which you can kind of uh, establish uh, contact with the department. The kind of most immediate way is through the PhD program, okay? So, um, so we have a PhD program that has an open call every year. We take close to 10 students every year. And uh, it's really open to people like you. So in fact, some of, the, some of our students come from the ISD or from other engineering schools. Uh, and so we really welcome people with a quantitative background and no experience in biology is required. The way the program works is that uh, if you're accepted, there's like a first semester of courses or in intensive training where people learn about a diversity of different things having to do with the brain from kind of the basics to slightly more advanced topics. Um, then there's a period during the summer where students can spend some time in the labs trying to get a better sense of what, is, what kind of research is done and which lab they would prefer to work in. And then eventually they decide to join a laboratory and they have on the order of three, four years to, do a, to develop a research project, okay? So I guess this is just like the, the numbers or the curriculum. Something I wanted to emphasize to you is that uh, the department actually encourages a lot uh, independence, drive, uh, motivation. So 
I guess if you think about like if you think about two extremes, one like a really big enterprise where you kind of join something that is already running and contribute a little bit versus at the other extreme, uh, a system where you basically have to develop everything by yourself, our department is more on that end. So we can talk later about how a typical kind of PhD occurs, or maybe these guys can tell you how their experience is. But if by integrating evidence about sensory input, you can try and put together a model that you then feed some kind of other data, like video data or some kind of other input, you could do that. Um, the other the other way we try to make progress, um, for example, in our lab. So my my supervisor, and this is maybe some even aspect, uh, another aspect that you also may find yourselves collaborating with us, is we are also very open to collaborations. So uh, so the labs themselves, even if you're not working directly for a lab in Champalimau, you may find opportunities to work. Uh, with us through a collaboration. So for example, in my lab right now, we have a student from the IST that is working in the robotics department. And basically what happened is we promoted um, a series of joint discussions with the robotics group here. And we had a couple of meetings and some of the groups um, um, showed interest to um, engage in more detailed discussions with us. And in the end what happened is we now have a, a PhD student from Technico that is working on in um, collaboration with our lab. So he's um, working with um, uh, Professor José Sanchevitor, José Sanchevitor in, um, in Vision, and he's trying to, he's, he's, his goal when he works with us is exactly is trying to um, get ideas to, because his master's is in robotics, is not, sorry, his PhD is in robotics, is not in neuroscience. So there his goal is to work with us so that he can build uh, improvements, he can, he can develop uh, literally um, better um, better models and systems um, that will then translate into the, into these things. So there's multiple multiple ways in, in, in which this can happen. But that's definitely one of the goals is, is, is uh, I think, in the future to do that. Yeah. 